What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be timing a 1.8 turbo engine on both the timing belt and the timing chain side. This engine was in a lot of Volkswagens and a lot of Audis in the early 2000s. This engine code is AWP. There's also a bunch of other engine codes that will be basically the same. It's belt driven on the front from the crankshaft to the exhaust cam. Then there's a chain on the back side of the exhaust cam that drives the intake cam. As you may see some things that are a little strange and maybe don't quite make sense for what we're doing, like missing cam caps. It's okay, we're gonna actually pull all this stuff back off and shoot a different version for the TT series that we're working on. That's gonna end up probably explaining to you exactly why you should never ever buy someone's unfinished project. Now on this engine, you are gonna find there's a series of timing marks and there's a series of places where it would be really awesome to have a timing mark where there's not one. The timing mark actually lives on the timing cover. You can see I have it highlighted right here in pink to make it a little easier to see. That mark corresponds to a spot here on the pulley, which I have highlighted in pink so that you can see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this lower timing cover on and then put the pulley on, and then we're gonna add a mark so that we can do all this stuff and make sure it's lined up without all that stuff in the way. Can't put the belt on with the cover on that covers up the belt. Now we should be pretty close to TDC here. We'll go ahead and just bolt our pulley up quick. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this crankshaft clockwise until our pink lines line up. And if you're not sure if you're perfectly lined up or not, what I usually do is I'll take a pocket screwdriver and just lay it on the mark or the little indent and make sure that they line up. So right there, we should be right at TDC. Now, it's not a bad idea to confirm your TDC position and make sure that your mark on the pulley is correct. If you take a long extension or a screwdriver or something and set it on the piston, rotate your engine around, you'll see my screwdriver moving up. It'll come up to a certain point and then kind of hang there and then start to go back down. That point is TDC. This should match the mark on your pulley. Now this is not exact TDC, but usually this will get you close enough to properly time one of these engines. Now it's important to point out that there's a little nub, this little nub right here means that you can only put this pulley on one way. Let me back up. You can only correctly put this pulley on one way otherwise your little nubber here won't line up or your bolt holes won't line up. So this really is clocked to the gear of the crankshaft. Now I'm gonna make a mark that you can't see, can't see our mark, but you'll see it as soon as I take off this cover here. We need all this out of the way in order to get our belt on. So I went ahead and added this mark right here. We're gonna use that for TDC, and I think so you can see it a little easier. I'm gonna put that mark right there. So now, even though it doesn't quite look like it on the screen, this is lined up to TDC. Our next move is gonna be kind of weird. It's gonna feel awkward, but we need to roll back our crankshaft, not a ton, that's, that's probably enough. The reason we need to do that is this is an interference engine. So if we bolt the camshafts down with this at TDC and they're not timed properly, we run the risk of bending a valve or dinking a piston or something like that. So we back this up just a little bit, that'll prevent that from happening. Our mark for our exhaust camshaft actually lines up with a mark on our valve cover. I got them accentuated in pink for you guys to see a little easier. We're gonna actually be working with the valve cover off so we're not gonna pay real close attention to this mark until we do our final check. Now for our marks on the back side of our engine, there is on the back cam cap, a tiny little arrow, and then a little indentation on the back side of the cam gear that lines up on one of them when everything's set properly and doesn't line up on one of them when everything is set properly. I'll walk you through what exactly this should look like once we get there but these are the marks that we need to be paying attention to. Okay, we are going to first up slide our cam chain tensioner in. Really, one of the only specialty tools that you need for this kind of stuff is this holder that compresses the timing chain tensioner like that. Otherwise, this would spoing out and uh, cause you well, probably not to be able to get it in. Or you could zip tie it. I've seen people do that too. So if we get our chain tensioner in here, you might have to pull this up. Oh boy. There we go. So our chain tensioner kind of lives in here like that. Then what we need to do is we need to time our camshafts. So timing our chain can be a little bit tricky and a little weird. I'm actually gonna just snug our chain tensioner down here real quick. 
you really do want to have the caps on. Now, based on the way this feels, I'm probably not timed correctly, but that works out good because that means I can show you how to fix it. So what you do is you count the number of rollers between the notches on the two camshafts and it should be 16 rollers. So we're gonna count, we're gonna start on the intake. Ideally as well, the intake cam dot on the cap and notch on the camshaft gear are also lined up. We're a little bit off on this one, which we'll fix in a minute. But if we count our rollers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I only get 15 rollers between and I need 16. So I need this part of the gear, instead of being between these two rollers, to be between these two rollers. Now this may require you having the camshafts completely loose or mostly loose. I have this front bracket still on, but that's mostly just holding my camshaft in place. We'll go ahead and take our caps back off. We're also gonna need to loosen back up our tensioner to give us the slack that we need and allow this all to move around. Go, okay, we need to come this way backwards one tooth. And what you can usually do is grab the cam, pull up on our tensioner and our chain, and just kind of lift the chain off the gear and woggle it one tooth. There is also a way to use cardboard to get this right, but I liked that way better. It also may help if you mark that to know whether you actually got it that one tooth or whether you just picked it up and moved it around. So without putting anything back, let's go ahead and count our rollers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now we have 16 rollers between our two marks. Our camshafts are timed correctly together. They're not timed to the rest of the engine, but they are correct. You can also look up here at cylinder one and notice that the lobes of the camshafts are both pointing towards where the spark plug well is. So we're pretty close to the camshafts and the crankshafts being timed, but our camshafts right now are timed together properly. So we can go ahead and put our back caps on and on our timing chain tensioner. Make sure you put a cam adjuster gasket, both pieces of it back in and bolt everything down and torque it down properly. And even though we're kind of walking step-by-step step through this, you wanna make sure you have the factory repair manual so that you can reference it as needed for things like torque specs and stuff like that. Not a uh, wing it type job if you've never done it before. Now, if you have your crankshaft at TDC, you don't wanna tighten these cams down. You wanna back it off of TDC like we did and then go ahead and snug them down. Now that we have the backside all locked down, I went ahead and took the tool out so that we can rotate our engine around. I'm gonna just drop the valve cover on just like that. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at our timing marks for our cam gear on the exhaust cam and the fixed point on our valve cover. Now, when I'm looking at this, this tooth needs to line up with this line or this notch, and it looks like I'm about a half a tooth, give or take, out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our cam bar, and we're just gonna bump this into time, just like that. Now, it backed up a little bit, but that's okay, because we're not timed on the bottom yet either. Again, if you're not sure whether you're lined up or not, take a pocket screwdriver, put it on the notch. You'll notice I'm still not quite lined up perfectly, but that's okay because we're gonna have to move around some stuff anyway. We're close enough here that I think we can move on to the bottom. Now, before we get our belt on, we gotta put our two tensioners on. You have this hydraulic tensioner here with the little grenade pin, and then we have a roller. Important note, this tensioner needs to actually drop behind the timing cover and underneath the cylinder head. So really, if you kind of set it here in the middle and then swing it up, that's sort of the best way to do it. Then just go ahead and bolt it up. We'll torque those bolts to 15 Newton meters. Next, we gotta put our roller on. Something to keep in mind too, there's a washer that's supposed to go back on the back side of this. So if you're missing your washer, you need to find it. I was missing a washer, so I had to find one. And this just threads in to the head. Snug that down with an eight millimeter Allen. Torque that baby to 25 Newton meters. Now, whatever you do, don't pull this pin. It's not time for that yet. But what you do wanna do is you wanna come down here to the bottom and go ahead and line up your TDC mark. Next up, time to put our belt on. Now, I like to put the belt 
so that you can read the words when you look down at it, which would mean the bottom of the words come facing the outside of the cam gear. Honestly, it probably doesn't really matter, especially if you're putting on a new belt. So the way I like to do these belts is to go ahead and get it on the cam gear, just like that. For the spot where it hits the roller, you wanna make sure it's actually in the roller channel. Then we'll come around and the back side of the belt, the non-tooth belt should hit this roller. Now you'll notice our belt's wanting to walk off as we're rolling it around over here. If you take some of these binder clips, you can kind of clip the belt on. Having the belt come off is a bad day. Now our belt's held into place on our camshaft. We're around the roller, we're around the roller on the tensioner. I like to put it on the crank gear next. That leaves the water pump. Now remember, our cam gear at the top was back just a little bit. So if we have done this right and we pull our belt, it should slip right on. If you need to, grab your cam bar, rotate it just enough, like not even trying to rotate it, and walk the belt on the water pump. Now, if for some reason those two things don't work, what you can do is you can take this roller off right here. That'll free up some space to get it on the water pump. I've also seen guys do it on the water pump first and then put it on the crank gear after that. That also works too. Sometimes these fall on no problem. Sometimes they're a giant pain in the butt. If you end up not able to get this belt on and you take this roller off right here, it's usually easier to put it on the water pump and then get it on the crankshaft. Let's go ahead and take this roller off so I can show you what it looks like because a lot of times you really do have to do that. Now we can put it on the water pump. There we go. So now that's on. We gotta put our roller back on. If you take this off, put some Loctite on the back side of that and make sure you get it good and tight. I also pull the belt away a bit for putting this on and then thread it in by hand. You don't end up cross threading your brand new tensioner. Make sure your belt is all the way on. Literally put your hand on the belt on each gear. Make sure it's all the way on. If it's not, shove it on. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put our lower timing cover back on. That way we can look at the proper marks from the car. We don't have to worry about, oh, did we get the mark we made wrong or not? This would be a step you have to do anyway, getting your car back together, so not a big deal, especially if you just put the bottom two screws in, then you won't have to take them back out to get the upper cover on. Put our pulley on, snug that guy down. And then we check our marks. Now it looks like I'm a touch past the mark, just a little bit. Let's see what happens when we go back. Just a, just a boop. All right, so we're lined up on our crankshaft. Now we need to look at our exhaust cam and see are we lined up or are we one tooth off? So we'll come up here, I'll lay my pen down or my pocket screwdriver down. Check it out, we're one tooth off. So what do we do? Do we take all this back off or do you think we can fix it like this? I'm gonna show you how to fix it like this. Before we get crazy, a couple of things to remember. One, we don't have our belt tensioned yet. Now when we tension our belt, Generally, it pulls the cam gear back just a little bit. So if we tension it now, we're gonna be in worse shape than we already are. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the engine around two revolutions of the crankshaft. That's gonna, of course, rotate the crankshaft twice, but it's gonna be one full revolution of our camshaft. So we're gonna do that, set our timing marks back, and see where we end up. There was one revolution. You'll see our mark is down here at the bottom, about 180 out. And we'll go around one more time with the crankshaft. I also have the spark plugs out. It makes this much, much easier to do so you're not turning against compression. And we'll come up to TDC on our crankshaft right here. And we'll come back up and check our cam. And it looks like we're still one tooth out. We have a choice here. We can pull the belt back off, move our camshaft or our crankshaft, and reset it that way. And if you fought the belt going on, you're probably thinking, I don't wanna do it that way. So here's another option. This sounds wild, but we're gonna rotate a piece of cardboard between the belt and the crank gear. This is gonna give us just enough slack for everything to move into the position one tooth. After we run this cardboard all the way through, what we wanna do is we wanna rotate the engine around two more times so that we're at TDC on the cam gear and recheck our timing. And as you can see, it worked. We are now properly timed. Now that we're properly timed, what we can do is we can pull 
our little grenade pin out. That's gonna release the piston inside of this hydraulic tensioner. Then all we have to do is rotate around two more times of the crankshaft. One. And we're coming back around for our second full revelation. Also rotation, the rotation revelation. There we go, TDC on the crankshaft, TDC on the camshaft. This is about what the gap looks like in a static position. Don't get super hung up on what this gap looks like on this engine, because this will change as the car drives and the slack of the belt changes. Now, with your front side timed, it's a good idea to come back and check the chain side as well. This is our exhaust cam right here, and as you can see, the little notch on the camshaft lines up perfectly with our little pink arrow on the cap. As we move over to our intake cam, it looks a little bit different. Here's our pink mark on the cap, so it won't line up perfectly. It'll be just a little bit towards the intake manifold. You can also go ahead and count your rollers one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And it may look a little different depending on how much tension is on your chain tensioner. But if your exhaust cam is lined up and your 16 rollers, this one has to be right. All right, so there we go. Our 1.8 is properly timed both on the chain side and on the belt side. We are good to go. Now, if you're doing this in the car, obviously you got a whole lot more work to do. It's pretty easy to do while it's all sitting here on the stand and you're not hunched over the fender. But what that allows me to do for you is show you exactly what it should look like without having to have a really awkward, weird camera angle or just cram a GoPro down in a hole. There are a couple of special tools for this job that's not bad to have. I'll link that stuff up for you guys down in the description. Now, again, this was part of the TT series right back here behind me where I bought an unfinished project and we're trying to get it put back together. So it may be a lot of fun. I don't know, we're, we're only this far into the series. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Now, I get the fun task of taking all this stuff right back off so we can do it a second time for the full TT series. Good, good for me, yay.